checkpoint here. And then... Boom. Hello everyone, Thoranks is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky, episode 158. Where, in the last episode, we had landed on this red-sanded desert with pink oceans, sporadic grit storms as our weather. And as I sat here, kind of sort of just watching the, the planets around me and the sky color and soaking everything in, I started thinking about how really, now that we have all this money, look at that creature, we don't really have a hard requirement for anything that we have to do now, because really we can afford anything we want, and if at any time we need more money, I can just run around of everything I've already shown off camera, and so pretty much we're at a point now where money doesn't matter, which, like, yay, that's really great, right? But then I'm like, so what's the long-term plan? I do like exp planetary exploration. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. I do like seeing the differences between each planet. But I think what we need to do is set up a race course. That's what we need to do, so... We're going to find some unique planets, and we're going to set up sort of a, a circuit. And as much as we will one day want to travel to the center of the galaxy, I don't think that's necessary right now. I think more than anything, most of our exploration can be done close to the base, and then that way... Anybody that took the portal and then mapped their way over to Terranautica would be able to participate in all of the races very easily. So I think we discovered all of these. I don't remember what this moon was. Is this the Blood Moon? Unknown planet. I thought there was one of these undiscovered. A mechanical planet. And then this planet that we just left. The desolate planet. Mechanical planet, though. Let's see what that's all about. minute 40 to get over there. These we're going to straight send these to the freighter. Nope, that's okay. We're not going to go after a fugitive pirate ship. We can, however, we can, however, check the galaxy map once we get a little closer. planet's a good bit out of the rotation of everything. See, I wonder if in these situations you're supposed to like, summon your capital ship sort of in the center. Because I don't know. The space station sometimes seems like it's in the center, and then other times it does not. But when you come to these uncharted systems... Pretty sure this system's uncharted. Yup. Yeah, so if we do any kind of a racetrack, see, now there's something to consider for our racetrack. If we do anything on an uncharted system, then there won't be a portal to connect to that. So, but if we only do races on civilized systems, we'll always have a portal, a way to get there.
Right, let's cut over here to the side where the sun is. I have no idea what's going to be in a mechanical planet. But I imagine it's going to look like one of the really odd anomalies we've been seeing. Okay, it looks like we've got the kind of shark's tooth mountains. Oh. Oh yes, it's these. These gear, gear machines. Turbiums? I'm not sure what they're called. Let's go see. Indetectable burning for the weather. The weather on these planets is uh, pretty creative. No issues with the sentinels, so that's good. Oh, look at that. Our only life form on this planet. And so we're somehow scanning the mineral. No, how about the anomalous animal, please? Thank you. Uh, these planets, uh, they, they have this sort of, like, feeling of being dangerous, but they're really not. I almost wish these anomaly planets came with, like, lots of fighting. Like, roving bands of destroyers or something. Because they're made to feel creepy, right? But there's nothing really... They're just eerie. Would be a cool place for a race, maybe. I don't know about this particular one. Those light, uh, those channels of light shooting out of the ground, that would be an interesting one for a race. Well, this one seems pretty plain. It's just this brown, brown, moderately sloping terrain with these shark tooth mountains, some giant floating, rotating metal machines. Not seeing any decorations to pick up, though. I was hoping to pick up one decoration. So listen to that music. Some of these anomaly planets, though, they seem to have even their anomalies and their decorations a lot more densely populated than others. This one seems to have it seems to have a lot of this open area here. I mean, look at this. Just these little gears kind of laying in the ground. I just want to shout and hear the echo. It feels so vast and empty. All right. Well, that's exploring every last planet here. Let's find where we're going to go in the system that's charted. So we can maybe start looking at some other unique planets. No, we're not doing any of that. Okay. You are here. Nope, we're not trying to get to the black hole. We're not trying to do any of that. I'm trying to do any of that. So if we follow our path back, we really are actually very, very close to everything. Look at that. We're, we're not even really all that far. We moved a little tiny bit. Hmm. Jeez. And there's so much here. And all we did was explore just a little tiny, like... <laughs> just the smallest little, like, corner. Started like, wow, we're starting to really explore some of this, but we, we really haven't. We have not. <laughs> I love it, though. That's kind of what I love about this game. So, here we have a yellow star. It's got water. It's charted space, so there'll be a space station. There'll pro probably more than likely be a portal, uh, a portal, excuse me, we'll get the coordinates from. So what we'll do is we'll check the one, two, three, four, five, six planets, some of them small, some of them large, and we'll see if there are any worth starting our race course on. That's what we'll do.
Whoa. Look at this nebula. It's just so like So it starts with like this golden rod. And then it swings over, you get like orange, you get like blood orange, and it's like red, magenta. Oh. Look at this. I don't know, the sky looks like it's going to be a weird color though. Oh, we got to start scanning planets. A charred planet, okay. A burnt planet. It looks burnt. Kind of red and charred surface. A lot, of, a lot of water on this planet. A rainy planet. Far away, looks like a lot of water here as well. Corrosive planet. The red corrosive planet. That's always interesting. An abandoned planet with rings. Oh, with this color sky? Oh. Could be interesting. The star, though, the color of the nebula around the star is fairly yellow. I'm not trying to blind everybody, but it's fairly on the yellow side. What do we got here? A radioactive planet. Roger. And that's the dead planet. And this one? A freezing planet. Alright, I don't think we're ready to stop in and see Polo, though, because... Yeah, we haven't got Milestone Discoverer, unfortunately. We're not there yet. We're Overseer, and we have eight more to go, actually. So we're going to actually finish receiving the data injection before we're ready to talk to Polo again. Um, but let's not... Let's not do that. Let's put that back on the purge, and I think our first stop will be the space station then. I suppose our first race should probably be on the rainy planet. Seems like... I don't know. We'll see. Blue grass. I guess we won't know what it looks like till we get down there. But first, we're going to absolutely go in and, and take a look at some modules. All the really important modules that I have to have, I've already got not too desperate to do the load in and out anymore to double triple up on on modules so let's see so I know my starship is good this starship is good so I'm looking for scatter blaster s modules or let's see we got all our visors and our mining beams so scatter blaster s modules maybe blaze javelin I I kind of want to install the Blaze Javelin. It's just one of those things I haven't, uh, I haven't ever messed with. Let's see, what if I put it over here? I think we'll keep an eye out for that, sure. Okay, so we're looking for modules for either one of those two. We got another scanner, and that's it, which is fine. It's not going to happen right away. Starship, Exocraft. So for our Exosuit itself, we have three shields. We have two of these life support. I... See, I didn't know if I was... So one more, one more life support tank, because I do want to replace that with an S-module, and then we need to go three more movement. Wow, that's actually a good bit. I um, I thought we had more 
movement in that. And there's not even an S-Class here. That's okay. It's quite alright. And no ships docking with this space station. This is an odd space station. It's the coloration. How much actual car, uh, copper are we running with? Uh, we have a good bit of copper. Ooh, hold on. Phase beam module S. Um, yeah. That could probably go to the freighter, to be honest. Alright. I guess we'll go ahead we'll see if there's any mi good missions. We haven't done a, a little bit of a starship run here in a bit. We've been in some uncharted systems. So we'll go ahead and we'll do all this together. Let's see what missions they have that are easy. Kill two predators. We know that's an easy one. Get some easy nanites. And then let's take a look at what missions we have to actually turn in. Kill 30 creatures. Yep. Those creature ones, that's, that's just money in the bank. I highly recommend you take... The kill creatures, kill predators, any chance you can. Especially if they have nanites, but even if they don't, even like 50,000 units, not that big of a deal, but it's rep, and it's 50,000 units we didn't really have to do much for because we were already doing it anyways. Take a photo on a tropical world, that's one I've had for a while, and it just happened that I took a picture on a tropical world. I think that's how we're just going to start doing those, because it doesn't hurt anything to hold on to them. This one's kind of meager. 8,000 units for some minerals, but rep with the Gek. I think our rep with the Gek is, is maxed out, though. Maybe. It's definitely not maxed out with the guilds. Alright, so that was all the missions we had to turn in. Got some new ones. That's fine. Put us back on the purge, please. I don't think I'm gonna run around here and, and talk to all the Corvacs. I'm gonna do that another time. Probably could have sold some stuff out of our inventory, but we'll see if we can't find a trading post on the planet. So it looks like the night side of the planet looks significantly more blood orange. Right? I mean, look at that. Just look how bright that nebula is. Hold on. So I'm trying to understand. If I go to the night side of this... Alright, and let's also, let's not forget, we're going we're gonna to scan for a trading outpost. All right, here we go. So I just want to see on the night side of this planet what this place looks like. All right, let's just take a look. So that's what our night sky looks like. All those reds and pinks. The weather, though. I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get rid of the weather. No, that's too much. I don't know if you can get rid of the weather, even for a picture. Slow down. Alright, we'll see if there was a landing pad here. I don't think there was. Well, I wanted to be on the night side of the planet to see what the sky looked like, and there it is. It's like we're going through one of our occasional scalding outbursts right now. That's kind of a neat night sky, though. in the rainstorm. It's kind of unique. It's got this weird, like, high canopy type trees. Like actual rainforest type trees. It's kind of cool. Bet we could set up a place to do a race here. Let's go 
well, first things first. Let's go ahead and put this put this one down. And I guess what we'll call for first is the Azure Spark. The storm does seem to be lasting for a little bit. I feel like sitting up near the coast is a good thing. But maybe not. Not enough fuel in the fusion engine. Whoops. I know uh, I used oxygen. I know that's probably not the most efficient, but I know I have the most oxygen. It's pretty far away from the coasts. Finally, the storm's clearing. Whoa, look at that animal. Some kind of bipedal calm eats small animals. It is some form of predator. Predator. I was going to say omnivore. Omnivore and predator. Look at it running around. Oop, it still pounces. It doesn't look like it's evolved to use tools yet. Let's see how this works. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun weapon. The blaze javelin. I'll use that. Look at this sky. Look at this night sky. Okay. So this is going to be the site of our first race. And you'll have to do the race at night. Hold on. This is good. Alright, let's get up to the top here. We've never made any kind of a race before or anything, so I have no idea how this goes. So we have to start doing it so that we can get better at it. Could sort of just run down there. Make a big loop. We're sort of on the coast. Look at this. New animals followed us up here. Wow. Natural burial site. Ancient bones. I didn't even pay attention enough to notice that. Oh. Trading post. That's the trading post we scanned for. All right, well, everything seems per relatively flat unless we wanted to travel further inland. But I think this is actually good. I sort of like this here. I like the direction this, the night sky is facing and uh, other things. All right, let's go ahead. And I think we have to... Yeah, I don't think you can do the race starter unless it's your base. Pretty sure. There you go. Yes, I would like to claim this base, please. Right on top of this little flat mountain area. It's not a lot of trees. They're, they're neat trees, though. The ones that are out there. It's not very thick jungle. Maybe you get more of that when you go inland. That might make the racetrack process a little more difficult. I don't really know how that's going to go. First of all, let's rename the base. It's going to be the the Thranx Pre um yep be the Tropical Race. We'll get the name to be something better. We just gotta we just gotta measure it as something here. Rename, no, cancel, yes. Okay. Now that we have that. Now we should be able to build Oh 
Ah, there it is. The race initiator. So the real question is, do we build a platform to have our our race on? I think we kind of do. So how about if so we go to basic components, concrete, so what's concrete? It's all ferrite dust. I think metal's the same way. Right, so the best way to do this, as I understand it, is to give yourself a wall. Give yourself a floor, give yourself a wall, and then you can floor onto that, and then what you can do is delete these items, and now you have kind of a surface up here that you can manipulate. Alright, so if I hop up here, this could very easily kind of be our starting area if we ramp up to it. Let's see how much room we need for our race starting section here. I've never... Right, cannot build missing components metal plating. Well, that's not a difficult thing to get. And we will have to make like a sleeping area or whatever. A little viewing gallery, maybe? What do we have? Race initiator, and I can't really see it. So if I just put it there, now what happens? Okay. Right. Okay, well, we've got these trees here. And then all we need to do is set up our ramp. Right, okay, and then maybe now I realize that tree is in the way, but that's okay, because look, here we can do it. This is going to give us a pretty good idea. Yeah, that tree has to go. I'm sure it'll come back, but it, it has to go for now. <laughs> You're sort of right in the way. Delicious. Okay. My gun eats trees. Alright, here we go. So I think now we can edit this. Not sure. Let's see. Create new track. Right. V to drop checkpoints. Turn to the pad to finish editing. Alright. A checkpoint right here. Yep. And then it's going to be checkpoint right here. Checkpoint here. Alright, then you got to cut across. Yep, across the beach, right? Checkpoint on the beach. That one looked like it came out sideways. A checkpoint over here. Just cut across the water. Checkpoint here. because you're going to come all the way back up this hill over here on this side. Checkpoint there. Right, checkpoint here. And then 
Boom. Let's see what happens if I hit, if I just hit control. Let's see. All right, so it looks like they do, they sort of, they draw you this little line. Drive through checkpoints, restart your time with X. Interesting, so, okay. So there wasn't really any build cost to put this down. And it didn't really give me the option to put down, like, the ramps or the accelerator pads. So you almost have to, like, know where you want those sections to be ahead of time. I can see. It might be cool. Okay, so this is one of those things that you definitely want to definitely want to race with others. I wonder if you raced with guns if you could do like a PvP race. That would probably be pretty neat. Alright, I guess that's the track record till it's not. Now, what if we... Okay, let's not start the race, but... Hmm. Because I can sort of get behind this planet. The weird orange sky, I mean... It's the green trees. The green trees, to me, they make it feel like it's it's coming back, you know. It's fighting to stay alive on this planet. Like, this water, I think, is just muddy water. Some kind of silt runoff from some major tectonic event. It looks really cloudy, like cloudy water, too. See, but I can't remember where the racetrack checkpoints are. Okay, I'm pretty sure one of them is here, so hold on a second. So if I say, hey, I want to build Race Force Amplifier. A race Obstacle. I need more metal plating, like lots more of it. Whoa, look at that creature. That creature looks like it's going to eat something. Nope. Friendly. Eats Star Bramble. You always have to check, don't you? Hmm. I think for the first race, it was important for everybody to see the building process. But I think in the future what we're going to do is when I select a planet for a race, I'm going to design the race off camera. And then I will do the race once on camera for the first time. I think that's probably the better way to do that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm not going to go ahead and stay here with this race. We do want this race to be finished and I don't want it to be in the position that it's in. But I don't want to keep spending the entire episode on it. And there's other planets to explore. So, and that's, that I think is way more important use of camera time. Feel free to weigh in in the comments if you agree, disagree. So I'm going to have to build a wall. <laughs> I'm going to have to build a wall just to put this little guy on. Oh, I guess I should put it down here, huh? So I'm going to have to build some way for it to fuse into the ground so it looks legitimate. Why doesn't this want to dock to this? Why are you being like this? 
It doesn't like it. Oh. It's not really like an indoor area, is it? Well, then this area is going to need more work. By a significant margin. Hmm. All right, let's go see what the next let's go see what the next planet looks like. How far away is our starship? Why is our oh? Because we left our starship. Yeah, we left our our ship over here by the by the area where we landed. It's like some kind of yeah, a little. Station in the woods. Delete that up out of there. So I guess I'll go ahead and save and chart this odd sector in the jungle. The Avon's jungle. Yeah, I called it. It's a jungle. We'll just go ahead and head north. This will be a neat planet for for a race, but I got to get it cleaned up, and then we'll have to get we'll have to get the portal cords after that. Well, you probably don't even need the portal cords if you can get to Terra Nautica. So what do we have here? The abandoned planet. It's a minute 33 away. So are we close to a different one? The freezing planet. A red freezing planet? Okay minute away. I accept these terms. A red freezing planet. That looks like mostly ocean from what I'm seeing. Oh, the greasy pistons. I should just tell them, hey, you want my greasy pistons? You can have them. No, we're going to put you down. We're going to have to. Whoa, no, don't turn away. Hold on. We were having a conversation, I thought. It's so much easier... Uh, to confidently talk smack against pirates when you have such a well-outfitted ship. And all I have are the darn photon cannon on this ship. Yeah, whatever. That's a big, bright red ocean, and it looks like there's nothing but ocean on the night side as well. Oh wait, I see a little bit of land almost like a glare at first. It was, it was caught up in the glare. What is going on with this planet? how much ocean there is. I've got to see some of this. Okay. Let's head over here. There's little tiny specks of land. Let's see. It's pretty deep through here, though. A little bit, a little bit. Not too bad. Oof, there are some deep sections along this area, though. With blue skies. 
blue skies during the day, green grass, outbreaks of frozen rain. Oh, I got news for you. It's not water. Not at this temperature. We already hashed that out. Wait, what? Ugh, am I really just going to jump in without a clear path out? I don't think that's how that's going to go down. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you thought or what everybody was waiting for. Or, yeah, that's not going to happen. All right, why, why wouldn't we take the sub? In this particular instance, why would we not? All right, little Nautilon, show me what's down here. Ooh. Sailing content is high. Water is incredibly murky. Does show signs as possible underwater caves under the coral. Means possible depth could be much lower. couple different types of schools of fish. Water seems to get shallow in some areas. Not really a sandy bottom. A little bit. Mostly grass and coral. Just the salt and everything's all kicked up. It's hard to see. No visual with aquatic predators at this time. Do have do have some dangers out here in the deep it looks like. This is a pretty good depth here. This looks to be a pretty high shallow ridge. I'm not sure if we're getting near land or what. Hold on. Oh, it's just a shallow part. Oh, no, there's a little bit of land over there. Okay. I'm still not seeing anything all that dangerous out here. But... I gotta say, the murkiness of the water is not really doing it. It's just really hard to see. It's like muck. It's all that silt, silt and sediment runoff. Or it could just be, you know, the water is so cold and the bits of it, or, or the bits of this solution that are water are trying to freeze in ice crystals. It's making everything sluggish and hard to see through. Either way. I think we've checked out what we can in the ocean on this planet. It's kind of a neat color on the ground there. Alright, so uh, we actually got that far away from our ship. Pretty cool. We could have gone and checked out the land. I find it hard-pressed to visit an, a, la a planet that is more ocean than land and make the call to skip out on any ocean searching or discovery. It just feels wrong. Wait a second. We're transitioning into the night cycle. Hold on. As now the sky will change to pink and the water will change to blue. What? I bet it's still hard to see in though. Come on, go down.
yeah, that's still really murky. But look how the feel of everything changed instantly. It was like, oh, now the sky is blue. And the sky is not. That's kind of cool. Oh, jeez. There's our picture right there. Oh, no, not with that tool, though. Yeah, how about that? How about if we get that tool out of there, huh? I like that. It's a nice picture. Alright, well, let's try to find some sort of land and make an assessment as to what the land on this planet is like. Because even the nebula appearing magenta is peculiar given how red the space is. Alright, and I think this area over here actually is all ocean. So we might have to take a little bit of distance just to get some perspective on this. That looks... There's like no continents on this planet at all. Oh, 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 that's... That's a big looking island, sure. Let's go with that one over here. Oh yeah, and yeah, it's definitely a big island. All right, okay. Don't have to come in so steep. Level out. All right, slow down, slow down. All right, so we've got. Oh look, the nebula does change colors on this side. You get the goldenrod nebula. The illumination? The ex it's extra illumination from space. Look how it brings out some of the color in the water. Almost like it's a sunrise or a sunset. Because even in the shadows of the mountains, the water looks blue. Until you get the illumination from space. Pretty neat. Alright, I said we hit the next planet. The charred planet. Mm. The rainy planet. The abandoned planet. Radioactive. I guess let's see what we got. Alright, so all our tritium is going to keep being sent to the freighter. We'll go ahead and hold on to the chromatic metal, that's fine. Lemium and Herox. I mean, really, that stuff should go to the freighter, too. It'll find a home. I did not bother selling these. I could have sent these to the freighter. I should send those to the freighter. Should have sold those. Okay, so there's some of this that needs to be straightened out here. We're letting the inventory get away from us. We are. I admit it. We're gonna handle it. So this planet is over here in the much more magenta side of the nebula. And the surface is silvery white. It's interesting. It's a tad unusual. Just the nebula in, in general, highly unusual here. It's pretty neat. Look at that. Just a bright silvery white. I can't even tell what color the atmosphere is. It looks like it's going to be like this magenta color almost. Alright, let's cut in. Yeah, there's definitely some reddish hues, maybe. No? Hold on. We're starting to get the spectrum of the light here now. Yeah. Yeah, we're, picking, we're definitely picking up the reds and the oranges from the neighboring nebula. Hmm. 
Okay, there's huge chunks of radioactive rock protruding from the crust of this planet. Looks like the clouds are building very tall. Must have very unstable air currents. Look at all that exposed radioactive metal. Sticking right out of the ground. Significant tectonic activity here. It appears desert-like, but there are photosynthesis occurring plants on the surface. Visible without a scanner. Let's find a location to settle down. It just looks like endless desert. Alright, this looks like a flat area, although no signs of life detected at this time. Building scanned at the last minute. Hold on. And it looks to be just a waypoint out in the middle of nowhere. All right, we're taking it. Five point seven rads. It's not that bad. Radioactive humidity. Interesting. So it's like the planet was a desert until radioactive humidity started growing these plants. And look at how intricate these plants are. Pretty neat. The planet just looks so, so silver from orbit. It was actually kind of cool. All right, let's save and chart this sector. The Hokar's Fen. I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and learn a couple of the local words here at these alien artifacts. Maybe, maybe not. Look at this plant. I've seen variations of this plant before, but this one is just sort of the most like an underwater creature you would think of. Even this one looks similar, but it's different. That's pretty cool. It's like a highly ferrous crust. Yeah, and these minerals started just weeping out and evaporating from, from the surface. That's where you get your radioactive moisture from. Oops, some creatures. Appear to have a small family network. Highly intelligent. They eat nip-nip buds. There you go. The <laughs> Corvax word for this, as in, this planet, or this plant will try to saturate you with toxins. If you let it. This is a, this is a, I gotta say, this is a neat radioactive planet. It definitely has some character going on for it. It has the mushroom. You can see there's like, there's 7.4 tox showing. It's a little radioactive, a little toxic. It, it kind of has that vibe to it. A little mushroomy, but not really mushroomy. They're more like actual plants. This thing is like mushrooms and coral. Oh, and it gives chlorine. Mm. Chlorine and dihydrogen from this rock. What a peculiar planet. I mean, just a regular radioactive planet. All right, but I do think that there's not much more to see or do here on this planet. We've pretty much made our assessments. We've touched down. We've mapped it. It is now a discovered, explored, boots-on-the-ground type of planet. And this whole system will be visible once we get the race up and going. Anybody can come here and check out any of the planets in this system that they're interested in. Um, but that's where we're going to go ahead and wrap things up for this episode. This has been No Man's Sky, episode 158. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you've had a good time watching, because as always, I've had a good time playing. Be sure to come back next time as we continue to explore this system 
and hopefully have our race nice and set up as the location to kick off the Thranks Pre circuit. Until next time, though, take care.